In this video, I will manage to tell you how I accomplished to install Debian 11 on my cloud home NAS, Western Digital My Cloud Home. This is how it looks like. It was supposed to be a more polished and powerful NAS, a better product than the one that preceded. But the Western Digital My Cloud, this one, the round corners was actually a kind of nice product while the Westner Digital My Cloud Home, this is the word home, they made it awful product. So I have this for six years and I'm waiting for the time when my hard drive will die because so far nobody that I could find online managed to um, replace successfully the hard drive after a failure, probably because they're trying to refresh the original uh, software from Western Digital on it. And as the drive goes away, all the partitions and everything disappear. On March 2023, 18 months ago, I got one email from Western Digital saying that their applications, I don't remember if it was a mobile or desktop application that only works on Windows, by the way, and I don't use Windows, so it was useless, was going to be end of life soon, mid, I think about June on the same year, and I created courage to uh, face the challenge and do something about it and take the ownership over my appliance with the risk of breaking my device. So I even disassembled it to fully understand how the parts are connected, how everything works and trying to plan for when the drive fails and what I can see from pulling it apart is that actually the board is attached to the drive and not the drives attached to the board in a way of saying that the heaviest and bulkier part of it that keeps everything stable is the hard drive and anything else is attached to it to become uh, not loose inside the box. Maybe the way will be uh, to put one SSD using a a mock <laughs> HDD uh, adapter to put the NVMEs or SSD drives, but not certainly not using uh, a compact adapter board like this. What I was trying to achieve when I started this project was first to be able to SSH and run any command or any application that I desire with no restriction by any vendor. I bought the hardware, it's mine. If it's a Linux box, I can do anything. Uh, and also be capable of make storages ad attached to the S USB 3 port. This, I think this was the most evident difference. This is blue compared to the one that preceded that I think was USB 2 and this is USB 3. So we can have faster uh, data transfer for additional storage or additional network adapters or even one USB hub with multiple devices connected to it. The way I managed to install, if you want to do it's on your own risk and I would say do a backup before. Um, I downloaded the zip file that contains the image that has to be decompressed and all the files copied over into a USB flash drive, a pen drive that has to be at least eight gigabytes big and FAT32 partition under uh, MBR partition table. And then the procedure is to power off the NAS, insert the drive, press and hold the reset button that's right on top 
of the USB port right here using a paper clip or something like that. And then power it on, keeping it for about 30 seconds and the light will change its behavior the way it blinks. You will realize that after 30 seconds, things change. At the end of the process, if I'm not mistaken, the light will become stable and that means it's fine. It will not be flashing anymore. Then you can use, I don't know, your router to see what was the new device that connected to the network and got one IP from the DHCP. You will know the IP. You can do also one ARP scan. Probably this device will not be doing any network connectivity activity. Will be, not speaking, will be quieter. Possible, you possibly won't find it with the ARP scan if it's too quiet. But whenever you find SSH as root, change the password that is as dummy as password. And then feel free to just go and apply all the patches that are pending since I created that image. Here's the catch. When you manage to sign in to this box via SSH, you will realize there are 24 partitions. Only the 24th is the one that contains user data and the other 23 are chops of the system. Because the system is so chopped in tiny uh, partitions, it's easy to fill up to 100% any of them when you try to install the most simple thing. My workaround it was to copy all the files to a new directory inside the user partition mounting point and then create a symbolic link use the new location that's much bigger it's about 1.8 terabytes because the whole drive is 2 terabytes and 1.8 is reserved to user files then you can do all the installations you need and leave it there or move them back if they fit uh, in the original partitions where they originally belong to. That was my workaround to make all the updates and you can't do it uh, without working a lot around it. So it's nice to mention that this is a nice piece of hardware. It's a quad core, uh, 64 bits, 1.4 gigahertz. You will see that there is usable three, uh, 730 megabytes of RAM, a gigabit port, one USB 3 type A port. The power consumption is very low. And yeah. And this imbecile number of partitions, which is nonsense. So here is how they look like. If you want to know if you had a corrupt, uh, a failed hard drive and you want to try create all the same partitions with the same parameters in a new drive and try to make it work. So feel free to come to this. <sighs> so just ignore all of these partitions because they are nonsense and focus on these three. When you decompress the zip archive, you will see that it contains some files and one directory and 20, 21, 22. These are the archives that are directly uh, copied over to those three partitions that are the most uh, relevant for this update to replace the original Linux system that Western Digital uh, customized and put a Debian on it. So kudos for the people who originally did the hack. I just built on top of it. And you can find here more information, but the original image is very old. 
was a Debian 9 then already came with Open Media Vault 4 on it. I did my due diligence and I inspect, I scrutinize the image uh, eyeballing, but also using forensic tools. I didn't find any evidence that anything malicious was in it. After I do the refresh with the image that I got from these forums online, I did check for network connectivity and this was silent, was not doing anything at all. In some point, I ended up trust, trusting on it and start building on top of it. I updated to Debian 11 and yeah, that's what you're going to find with my uh, image that is still uh, under support until next year, 2025, if I'm not mistaken. So might be a good thing to go other than Debian 9. There are many things that I recommend to be done, like, for example, installing Ganesha for NFS management. And here's some things. I've never used this. I usually use NFS common. And it was interesting to see another way of doing the same thing, other than the defaults for many distributions that everybody has. The way I use it, I simply disable Open Media Vault. I try to keep it as simple as possible. No HTTP or HTTPS port opening it. And I use NFS and SMB so I can have uh, the nice functionality that everybody expects from it to put files in the network and get on the TV for the videos or music or something. But something that's uh, a passion of mine. If you want to give it a try to Minayo, Minayo is a very clever application written in Go, super light. You just get the binary, make it run, and start using it. It's on S3 compatible block storage server. It is fantastic and runs perfectly in this NAS and makes it absolutely one amazing piece of uh, asset for any infrastructure that you have. You can push your backups to your um, your own S3 or share publicly files using this uh, highly secure application and very flexible S3 compatible way of doing things and then you can even make it run under low privilege uh, using one specific uh, created for this application user and yeah that's my advice to better utilize your resource in a meaningful way that you can learn develop your skills and have a great asset that's really enterprise level uh, software the next step, actually, I'm not in a rush, <laughs> but when my hard drive finally fails, it's going to fail in some point. I created one full image of this two terabytes drive in one bigger four terabytes drive that I connected on the USB 3. And that's my hope when this drive fail and I will get another drive and try to put it back. I will be able to recreate the whole disk image, even with disk identifier, all the partitions and everything, and place it back where they were originally the same way and hope there is no other catch that AWS put it there to identify that the disk was replaced because the file system will be exactly the same. So if you manage to do such a thing or you found that someone was capable of recovering this kind of nice, piece of hardware. It's a great asset, a great uh, appliance. And yeah, it's going to be a shame to see, it, to see it going to waste just because a hard drive failure. 